The South has, definitely has a, a checkered past. But I also think people probably just have a caricature of Southern folks, which is like backwoods, chicken fried, shotgun fishing <laughs> folks. <laughs> Those are some of the most fun people to hang around, honestly, <laughs> if you get to know them. I think it's just about giving them a chance, just like you would want other folks to give you a chance. Gabe Lee is as Nashville as they make him. He's a classically trained pianist who got his start playing with his mom in church. These days, Gabe is most comfortable in the honky-tonks that make his hometown famous. A first-generation Taiwanese-American, Gabe makes music that harkens to a bygone era of Americana, replete with wailing guitars, pedal steel, upright piano, and the occasional harmonica. But it's Gabe's voice and distinctive point of view that defy expectations. Gabe drove us around Nashville where we talked literature, John Prine, and the tonic of homemade whiskey. I'm your host, Tao, and this is Southern Sounds. Am I correct in saying that you be, you started in music as a piano player? That's right. I was a student of piano from a young age, and mm -hmm. uh, I think it was my mother really loving uh, her upbringing as a pianist herself mm -hmm. and wanting to make sure that I had an opportunity to experience that. Sometimes I'd wake up on the weekends, and my mother would be composing something that she dreamt up the night before. I found that I didn't think I had the personality or the characteristics or even the work ethic to be a concerto pianist, which led to me pursuing music in general outside of the classroom. You could say that I awoke in this condition. Mm, little heart barely beating, got a whole lot of healing. Whoa. I used to be a bad operator. I saddle up and see you later. Gonna fly this rusty old tractor. And so I'll look to the Buffalo Road. Can you talk more about your songwriting philosophy, how things get started? I like to let them marinate. Yeah, I like to let songs cook. Uh, some of the songs have taken years. Usually I'll hear something when I'm driving on the road, and I'll pocket it. I'll sing two lines into my phone, and I'll come back to it later. If it's really uh, interesting to me, then mm -hmm. it should stick around. Mm -hmm. It should stay in my head. Can you walk us through the songwriting process for this song in particular? Sure. Uh, this one was a few years back. I was referencing a, a landmark my buddies and I like to hang out at, kind of in the boonies where uh, you could get out and get into trouble without getting into trouble, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of an anthem to, to always coming home, but sometimes you'd have to leave it to love it. I grew up out here, and I went to school in town. Mm -hmm. um, so I was commuting um, about 35 minutes, you know, every day for school. Music Row would be like right in here somewhere, just, uh, just southwest of like, you know, smack dab downtown. It's still an epicenter of, of music business, but this isn't like Honky Tonk Central is not necessarily the epicenter of country music anymore. The people that you find who move here, you know, with a guitar and a dream, can yeah. they make it enough to, to live within city limits? Uh, they're going to have to work a couple jobs mm -hmm. and they have to find out how to split time between that. Right. At some point, something's got to give. Mm -hmm. That's the reality of being a songwriter here. Right. Lord, please take my wings. I ain't bright enough to work these fancy things. I lose my teeth. I go blind in all my dreams. Too damn scared to ever leave. 
Can you share more about what it's like to be both a Taiwanese American and a Nashvilleian? Growing up here as a son of Taiwanese immigrants, there's definitely been moments where I feel out of place, but I've never felt like I didn't belong. And likewise, when if people don't know what I look like and they hear my music, this is not what they, they see. Starting out, you basically have to introduce yourself to a community of um, honky-tonks, like songwriter hideouts, and that's how most songwriters network in Nashville. I sit right here and talk to you. I was very lucky to enter a community that was, I guess it was, it was waiting for me. Gabe, can you tell me more about your songwriting influences when you were growing up? Yeah, absolutely. I was definitely uh, gravitating more towards storytellers like John Prine, Bob Dylan, um, Jim Croce, and Jackson Brown. But at the same time, um, I'm inspired by, by literature. I'm inspired by my travels and the people that I meet. So, so a lot of these are just like ideas that, like this one, like a collection of American idioms. A treasury of American folk humor, two bucks. Don Rush, one of my favorite collections of short stories, mm -hmm. um, which are like evocative, beautiful. Yeah, they're rich and strange. The short story uh, for me is like a track on a record. Uh, so I enjoy the brevity of it, but I also enjoy that it, it gets to the punch. We ended the day at Gabe's favorite songwriter hideout, the legendary Bobby's Idol Hour. This day drinking dive is the perfect place for Gabe and his band to meet up and workshop new material before hitting the road. It was a clear blue Sunday morning down in Tennessee. I was a flat out back of the church getting ready to leave. Lord knows I'd never been afraid to die. I just can't stand the thought of coming clean. The kitchen soap scares a living hell out of me. Turns out that devil of a weatherman. There was a gentleman last weekend, mm -hmm. and he pulled my picture up on iTunes, and he was like, "Oh, that that can't be him." And then he discovered that it, that it was, and he ended up giving me a bottle of whiskey that he made, and Ooh. you know, just oh, it's like that. Yeah. Yeah, kind of terrible thing. It was about that time Susanna got to walk in away. I think in my, like, my love for literature and those guys I was talking about, I think they capture the beauty of Southern folklore and landscape without, without ignoring the darker truths of, of the past. Jambalaya truck stop, pull apart, wet and dirty. Is that something that you stay conscious of when you're writing lyrics? Could you help a good and honest man? I'm really attracted to the, the human element, right? The humanity of it. Mm -hmm. We are more together than you might think. That's probably the biggest thing for me is uh, to be a sonic and spiritual like bridge for folks who just want to hear a song and, and know in their head that someone has felt the way that they feel, to feel empathy, to feel a greater connection. Kicking all the front doors down, Susanna, darling of a one horse town. Oh, Susanna, darling of a one horse town.
I wanted to be a writer before I wanted to be a musician. Because I think just about everybody writes from the place they know. What matters is the transformative power of metaphor and the stories we tell ourselves about the meaning of our lives.